Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. A win for freedom, my friends. Dr. Bonnie Henry filed for a crazy injunction to give police the power they should never have in Canada, which is to arrest congregants for worshiping in person, and not just for worshiping in person against public health orders, but even if the police suspect or have reason to believe they were planning to attend a service. And all I have to say is, in your face, Dr. Bonnie Henry. Trey Humphrey here with Rebel News, standing in front of the Vancouver Law Court after the Honorable Justice Hingston gave his ruling in response to BC's public health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, filing for a crazy injunction. Now, this is in response to a petition that was filed by some churches that have been open, and also it is a matter of the right to peacefully protest. Now, the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms has been helping the churches uh, with that petition. And in response to that, Dr. Bonnie Henry filed for this crazy injunction to penalize the churches that put their name on that. Now you can catch the full report to that at rebelnews.com. I also speak to um, Marty Moore, who is a constitutional lawyer with the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. But today I speak with Paul Jaffe. Now he is the one who gave the arguments on behalf of the church about how ridiculous this injunction is and wanting it to be thrown out. And the Honorable Justice who ruled on this matter here today, he needed some time to think about it. He said he was basically put in an impossible situation to do so. And today he gave his ruling. We're going to talk to Paul Jaffe. And we're going to talk to a handful of protesters that were here today as well. We'll speak to one of them to get their reason about why they were here also. If Chuck E. Cheese, uh, Costco, Castle Fun Park, places like that can be open, uh, there's no reason why the churches can't be open. We've been following the protocols for safety. Um, we've complied and there's no reason. We need to make a stand for the house of the Lord to be open. That's what God's purpose for us, to come together and worship Him. And so today's injunction ruling, that's going to be a precedent setter, right? It's going to go across Canada. We need to make a stand as believers. And so what do you think? How did the judge rule today? Well, she didn't get her injunction granted, so I'm very happy about that. So, yeah. The judge had some brains, thank you. I, I just believe that there's a level of you know complacency, people have just kind of fallen asleep, comfort zone, and they just need to do some research and, and study for themselves and just understand what's actually going on. What do you have to say about people, even Christians, who feel like, well, the Christianly thing to do is to stay home right now and that this is you know out of line? I think we were called to assemble um, especially when uh, Bonnie Henry is an unelected official and she doesn't have the jurisdiction to tell us how to worship. And for me, worshiping means gathering together with other believers and worshiping God together. She can't tell us how to worship. I'm sorry, she can give us medical advice. That's it. You look at superstores and Costco's, the parking lots are packed. The stores are packed. You looked at restaurants where the parking lots are packed and the restaurants are packed. Same thing with health facilities, you name it. But it's just targeting towards Christianity, Christian uh, groups, religious groups, and, and that has to stop. We need to make a stand and be unified in this. I'm here with Paul Jaffe. Now, Paul, you gave great arguments, and today was the ruling. Yes. about the request for an injunction by Dr. Bonnie Henry. So tell us how it went. What what did the justice say? Well, um, to the great relief of my clients, he dismissed the Attorney General's uh, injunction application, which... Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Well, well, if it had been granted, it would have put uh, my clients in a very, very difficult place. Uh, given the depth of their convictions based on religious beliefs and a fundamental tenet of their faith is to hold these in-person worship uh, services. And uh, that would have been very, very difficult had the injunction been granted. And I think the judge picked up the fact that um, on these kinds of things, 
Um, it's somewhat discretionary. The judge can take a deep dive into the facts, and uh, those facts show that, that my clients, um, the churches here, have been very, very careful uh, in the way they've conducted their in-person services. Um, these are not people who are dismissive or inattentive to the concerns about a public health risk. These are people that have uh, taken all of the required steps to ensure that they are um, uh, being safe. And I think that was a, a, an important factor with the judge. Um, so thankfully, he, uh, he uh, dismissed the application today. Yes, thankfully. And I know that the judge also mentioned uh, being sort of put in a impossible task to kind of rule on this. Why do you think um, there was such a selective group of churches chosen, the three churches that had their name on the petition? What's that about? Well, far be it for me to speculate. Um, <laughs> having been asked the question, you know, it, it was a response, I think, to the fact that, that these are the churches that have uh, instigated this legal challenge to the orders. So in, in, in some ways, it was a response to the challenge. Um, I think with some justification, the Attorney General is concerned that the public can see people uh, not complying with um, these orders. Uh, that's an understandable concern. Um, but at the same time, I, I think the, uh, the, the reason my clients have, have started this case is because they know that they are being safe and that um, while secular activities of a variety uh, of, uh, of things uh, are not prohibited, the churches are, and they feel this to be discriminatory and arbitrary. And uh, we have medical evidence to show that um, that the, the way our clients uh, conduct these activities is not unsafe. Um, so, um, in any event, it's been a it's been a, an interesting day, uh, one that my clients are grateful for. Um, they'll continue to uh, conduct their activities very safely, and then we'll have our big hearing in March, uh, where where the the, the full uh, array of constitutional issues will be addressed on the merits. Absolutely. Now, uh, at rebelnews.com, we have covered at least one of the three churches, Riverside Calvary Worship, and you're right, they have uh, someone cleaning the doors and spaced out services and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it is good to see that the judge probably grasped that, you know, weighed everything that's going on there. Now, can you tell us a little bit more of of what you're expecting or, or what the strategy is without ruining anything uh, going into the, the next situation? Well, I wish I had some secrets to keep, <laughs> but I don't. It's pretty clear. We've set it out in our petition and um, there are some fundamental freedoms that are enshrined in our uh, Charter of Rights and Freedoms that, that are clearly uh, infringed, uh, we say, and the, the, the Attorney General doesn't dispute that there's been a prima facie infringement of those freedoms. You know, obviously religion is, is uh, freedom of conscience, thought, opinion, belief, association, peaceful assembly, all of these are expressly protected constitutional rights that are engaged here. Um, the question in March will be whether the Crown can show that these orders constitute a reasonable limit and it's an onerous test on the crown. It has to be prescribed by law and demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. So there's 30 years of case law analyzing what that test consists of. And in our view, uh, the crown uh, may be hard pressed to show that these orders reflect a reasonable limit on the rights, the constitutional rights of the churches. And of course, Mr. Baudouin, who can't be forgetted, although today's hearing was just on the churches, yeah. His case is an extremely important one because it deals with the right to protest, mm -hmm. freedom of expression, assembly, association in the public square. And that's a, an aspect of this case which will uh, attract considerable attention in March, along with, of course, the uh, freedom of religion issues. Right. And so in closing, I asked this question to Marty Moore as well with the JCCF. Uh, what would you say to people who think it's completely selfish and out of line to be concerned about fundamental freedoms right now during life with COVID-19? Well, I would say um, I would encourage them to keep an open mind. Uh, 
pay some attention to the facts. Um, I know at, at a distance it, it, this case can attract that kind of opinion. Uh, but if there's ever a time and a need to look to the Charter, it's at times like this when uh, society is facing um, uh, crises and where governments may be inclined to overreach, overextend their powers in ways that are quite unfair and quite unjustified. So, so in my view, if ever there was a time to pay attention to the Charter, it's at, at times like this. And quite frankly, if there's ever a time to recognize the value of churches, it's also at a time like this. Absolutely. Historically, the church has always been frontline during disasters and things like that. Yeah, I agree. So it's uh, it's uh, uh, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is still the uh, supreme law of the land, even in a pandemic, and I would say especially in a pandemic. I agree. Thank you so much and well done. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. So a win for freedom today in British Columbia. And so we do have to wait to see what is going to happen March 1st to March 3rd. That's where the actual decisions about the petition that was filed, the right to peacefully protest and the right to worship in person, of course, with a safety plan in place. So make sure you subscribe to us at rebelnews.com so you don't miss a beat on any of that. If you want to help us with the freedom fight, you can head to fightthefines.com. We've helped hundreds of Canadians fight tyrannical fines, whether it is for peaceful protests, attending church, or even charges in some case for things that are popping up in the name of COVID-19. You can tell us your story of a fine there, or you can donate what you can at fightthefines.com.